this kind of review. Okay, so I'm going to do a add object, shift A curve. We're gonna do a Bezier. A Bezier curve is simply a curve with two points. You see this kind of fishbone kind of stuff, that's just the normals. And you can turn that off by simply clicking here and unchecking normals. So if it, that kind of freaks you out a bit, okay. And I'm going to um, go to the front right here. And I'm gonna do RX90 so that the Bezier is kind of standing up. Okay, and we can add, of course, points to this by selecting the two points. These are the handles, so these are not points, it's only the one in the middle, okay? And then I can right click and subdivide. By subdividing, you get a point in the middle, right there, okay? You can increase your subdivide by clicking subdivide here and actually increasing the numbers. If I want more, I can just increase it like so. So let's say that's what I want there, okay? And what you can do with this is that you can move the point and you can do this. And we did this with the, uh, with the name, right? If you guys remember, we did this to write your name and whatnot. However, on this one, you can do is break this Bezier curve so that it's not too smooth, okay? you can change the property of the actual point, okay? So what you do is, once you select it, you can right click it, I mean, I'm sorry, you can press V as in victory, okay? Let me get my screencast going here, okay? So you can press V for victory, and then you can change it, okay? So automatic is a smooth one, vector align, all this stuff right here, but free right here, is what you want if you want your handles or those control points to be independent. So if I press V, I mean, take a look at it first. If I click one of those and then I press G, it rocks, it's like a seesaw, all right? But if I select that, press V and go to free, each handles now will provide and give me something like that. So something sharp, you know? So as opposed to this one, if I wanna grab that, there's no way I can get a sharp one. Not unless I select that, press V, free, and then go like so. All right, so you can kind of create uh, some sort of kind of like texture for it, okay? Some form of deformation. All right, so there's that. Okay, so what is the whole point of this exercise? Well, I'm gonna teach you uh, multiple ways to kind of do um, certain things, right? So let's say where you're building a character, um, uh, not related to our project, but something that you could use for future projects, okay? So let's say here, I'm gonna go with uh, a new one. Okay, we're gonna delete this. I'm gonna get, let's say, a sphere, or let's see if I can open some of my, uh, some of my models that I'm working on. All right, so I've been working on this one. Let's say we wanna add some hair to her, right? So we're gonna go with uh, the curve. So I'm gonna go Shift A, Curve, Bezier. That thing is gonna be, uh, uh, let's see here. There it is, it's almost, it's a good size, okay? What I'll do is go to the uh, side viewport. Now I'm gonna rotate that RZ90, then RY90, so it's kind of standing up. There it is. You can already see kind of like the flow if that's the root, right? So say, let's say we're gonna make a hair out of this one. I'm gonna go get rid of normals right there. So I'm gonna go here and then just kind of really easily just kind of stand out as a root right there. All right. If I put this hair sideways, it looks familiar, isn't it? It kind of looks like our president's hair. It is that. If we go sideways, <laughs> all right, let's not go there. Okay, let's uh, right click subdivide and then let's say I'm gonna add uh, three right there so I can really control it, okay? So you're not seeing per se the hair right here. We're just kind of looking at the strand. Oh, what we can do, let's say if this happens to be, let's say, hair. Okay, so I'm just kind of positioning that Bezier curve just so that 
if we decided to use that as hair, um, we kind of see the flow. That's all. All right. And then what we can do with this hair is that if I were to go to the uh, spline or the curve uh, parameter right here under geometry, I can put a depth to it. So we get this one. All right. You might say that's not a very good looking hair. And I agree. The whole point of the uh, bevel is just to give it like this uh, shape, like a round shape, okay? And we can decide whether how the resolution is on this one. So if I were to go to uh, force this image to show wireframe, you can kind of see that this is a very dense object. And it factors in on the resolution. So if I go here and change the resolution to, let's say, one, so you can see it's almost like super low poly, right? And in here, if I go 12 resolution at the top, it gets low poly even more. So you can really control it, okay? But the whole point here is not to give it a bet, uh, a depth level right here. It's just to uh, show you what can be done without doing much, okay? So let me go back here and put that back to zero so we don't have anything so we're going to introduce a new one where we're going to combine another shape for this so I'm going to get make sure you're in object mode I'm going to go shift a curve I'm going to get a circle okay and I can put the circle away here so we can really see it so what I want to do is I want this circle to kind of uh, I want this curve to follow the shape of this circle, but what's so special about that? Nothing, right? Because we already did that by simply increasing the depth, and we got a circle, sorry, on this one. All right? But what we can do is, if I change the shape of this, then that's what's going to follow along that. It, and since this is an editable object, it can change, okay? So let's apply it first. I'm going to select this curve. I'm going to click object right here. And I'm going to select the circle, this one right here, Bezier circle. It's the only object that we have there. That's not the curve. There it is. So like I said before, oh, it's like a mohawk, right? Uh, it's nothing special, right? Because it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's independent of the, what's happening to the actual object, right? So and then I can change that to give it more density and whatnot. But if I go here now, well, let's go to the top. Uh, we can see it like this. And change some of these. What's this one? You see that here kind of changing? All right, so it's getting controlled by the circle. So if I were go to go here, and that's the side, it looks like this is the this is the top. So if I can manipulate the circle, then I can definitely do something with this one. So if I'm gonna go to the top here, okay, what I want to do is kind of make this one a little bit thinner right here, or maybe make it wide, it depends. So I want to make it like hair. So I'm going to go like so. So I want to make it kind of like, looks like a sausage right here, but look what's happening with the hair. You see it? It's kind of like that strand right there, okay? And then what I can do is uh, maybe shorten this one a little bit so it's not too kind of chunky. And I want to add some subdivision to this. So I selected those three. I'm going to right click subdivide. And that's probably good, going to be good enough for now. So I'm going to select this three, press V, free. Then I can make this one kind of go like that. So it actually has some sort of cut. And you'll see in a moment here what that does to the actual hair right here. You see it? So it's starting to give it like, kind of like a fake polygonal hair pattern, all right? So depending on what we do here. So if I were to move those a little bit closer, like so, and we kind of get that. However, if I select this, we gotta taper this, right? So if I press tab here to go to edit mode, if I select one of these points here, when I press N, turn on screencast again, okay? 
and then go to item right here. With that point, there's a radius. So if I go zero on that one, it gives you a pointy. All right, and then I could start kind of in a way, build this thing so that it's kind of like chunks of hair that I can apply. All right, so let's say that one right there and I can start kind of manipulating it now. So it's like, and you want a few variations of this so that it doesn't all look the same. Okay, and you can definitely uh, go to the front right here, select some of these points and then kind of move them also. So it's not like it's, it's all kind of stiff. The point is you can have this one and then duplicate it, rotate it a bit, and you can have multiples of this and you're just basically piling them, okay? Of course, you gotta fix it here in the back. It's a little bit more involved regarding, you know, getting it uh, working, but you can kind of see here, if we keep adding to that, you will get that kind of polygon look for the hair easily, okay? So you can kind of duplicate that. I'm like, you know, just kind of show you real quick here what we can do. And you can change the size. You can shrink them, you can make them bigger, so on and so forth. So, okay, so that's one way to kind of create kind of fake polygonal hair using just splines, okay? So let's look at another concept for it. So let's say we're gonna start creating our lamp, okay? Uh, let's do a cup first. Okay, one of our accessory that we might need. Okay, so I'm gonna go and um, get a, uh, let's say a cylinder. Okay, this might be two high polygons, so I'm gonna change the vertices to, uh, let's say uh, 16, kind of cut that in half. Turn on my screencast again. Okay. And uh, we're gonna make a super simple cup. It's not even tapered. It's just one of those kind of very um, rigid straight cup right here. So I'm gonna select the top. I'm gonna press I. Okay, right there for the lip. I'm gonna do the bottom as well. I'm gonna press I. I'm gonna press E to extrude. And scale it. So it, it tapers a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go here, but I'm gonna go to the front and go to a, a see-through mode so that when I extrude it, I could see where the inside is going. Okay, and I wanna just put it right there. I don't want it colliding with the bottom. So we'll take a look at this, there it is. So the problem with this is when we apply a smooth modifier, right? a subdivision surface, it's gonna collapse, okay? Do you see what it looks like? I'm gonna right click and shade smooth it because there's not enough geometry in there. We can't get that rigid look. So the solution is, you probably guessed it, is we're adding Control R or edge loops, okay? So for the edge loop, I'm gonna do a Control R. Right here, since I wanna distribute this, I'm gonna go, let's say give it four, okay? So as you can see, it already went straight, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing for the inside because you gotta match that. So, but for the inside, three probably is fine because it's much shorter. All right, and now let's take a look. All right, that's looking better. It's still very smooth over here, so then we can add, um, a control R close to it, and another one inside. Not all the way up, but just right here. So it's just enough to kind of make that thing rigid. There you go. 
Here, you're never going to see the bottom because it's an accessory for your table, for your Bible and all that stuff. But we have our model and pride, so we're going to add one little right there and maybe one here in the middle to kind of keep the base sturdy, you see it. All right, so for the handle, there's two ways to do this. One way is you can actually extract and extrude going like that, right? But let's make it a separate object so that we can play with our with what we learned today, okay? So I'm gonna go to side viewport here, and we're gonna go shift A, curve, bezier, okay? If I click that bezier, there it is. And let's say on the bezier, we want to um, rotate it going this way so that R, Y, 90, so it's standing up. All right, right here you can already tell that it's begging to be kind of like a cup design, you know, or handle. So if I press, um, I'm gonna turn off the normals. So if I were to connect this, I'm gonna shorten my handles first. Okay. And right there, I'm gonna connect it right there. I'll do the same thing here. All right, and kind of curve this one a little bit. Might have to subdivide it. Okay, a right click, subdivide, maybe two. And we can properly kind of design your handle depending on how you want it. So if you want it kind of angled, where it's kind of like an ear lobe. Curve that a little bit. All right, let's say that's good enough for now. Okay, we go here, we go to geometry. Add a depth to it. All right, kind of like that. Okay, so there's two ways so we can handle this one. You can make it kind of wider, so on and so forth. So, uh, but let's fix first the uh, the actual curve. So probably way too high right there. Probably way too low right here. All right, so let's say we don't want the depth right here. So I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna get a circle that I can control so I can make it wider. Kind of like what we did with the hair. Gonna get a circle. Gonna put this aside so we can clearly see it. Okay, we're gonna select this one. It's gonna be massive. Select the circle. Ah, all right, so we can scale this one right here. As you can see, we haven't done anything different except now there's an option to kind of flatten that. Remember, this one controls this. So if I were to grab one here, you can kind of tell where that is. So it looks like it's this one and that one that kind of controls it. So if I select those two and I do S, Y, scale along the green line. And as you can see, we made that thing wider. We probably have to work on the points right there because it's colliding inside. Okay, so there's that, so it's wider, okay? And then let's say we wanted to, uh, let's say we're happy with that one. We just wanna go back to the line right here, kind of fix that. So right here, I can go to my item and then lower the weight. Uh, sorry, not the weight, radius. Okay, so it kind of tapers in there. Same thing with this one. All right, then we're gonna go here. If I wanna make this one a little bit bigger, it's probably fine like so. Let me see. That's probably fine like that. So I just wanna make sure now that we're not being too aggressive with the curvature so that it looks kind of, you want to make sure some of your handles are almost equal in length. All right, so. And when you're happy with your cup, okay, you simply select it, right click, and then convert to mesh. 
then becomes a polygon. And you can shift click this one, then control J to combine the two, okay? It's probably overkill with this one, which probably should, should have lowered the, uh, but it's fine, okay? Then we can go to our EV right here, give it a proper texture, and then we're probably gonna make this one more porcelain-like, okay? And add a little sheen to it right there. And if you want to clear code it to so even get it like a, an extra buff. All right, so there's your coffee mug. Maybe we could have lowered that a little bit, but uh, always use, um, uh, what do you call this? A reference when you're modeling something, okay? So that's one type. Uh, we can build another one. Uh, any questions with this? Okay, we're good. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go on to the. Oh, there's a chat. We have a chat. I want to say, can we add a fluid inside the cup? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can definitely add fluid if you want to make the fluid um, real. Like you want to move the cup, then you need to go with particle system. You need fluid simulation. Okay. We're not going to go there today because it's going to confuse a lot of people. Or you can actually just do a fake one if it's still. That's just another uh, object. Most likely another cylinder. Okay. You can make the uh, cylinder transparent. Okay. Transmission. Then you can do a, you can do an alpha blend. And let's say we'll make this one kind of dark. Let's say it's coffee. You can scale it. All right, SZ, SZ. Okay, so it's kind of, there it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's just, you know, if it's just fake, it's still, then you can just do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Uh, but That's what I wanted want, to know. Yeah. yeah uh, but if you want it to be real, then like you move the cup, different story. You got to make it a uh, uh, real fluid, but that's probably going to kill your computer. <laughs> all right. So, but it's all good. Uh, let's see here. Um, in EV, we got to put all this. Uh, we probably could put a subsurface uh, property to this one. Let me see here. I'm gonna give it a uh, like a reddish kind of tint to it. I probably want to show much of it. Let's say I'm trying to make it look like kind of tea. Oh, I think my computer is um, kicking in. Yeah, you could probably hear the fan. First time I've heard this, heard this thing kind of go crazy. Uh, uh, let's see, shadow mode. Uh, yeah, let's see how we can make it a little bit more uh, we can show some refraction. All right, so it's like see-through. And uh, what else? Uh, that's probably it for now without overdoing it too much. Okay, this kind of look like it's, it's not looking too solid, you know, because this really works great in cycles. You know, cycles is where you can definitely make it like fluid like and whatnot but uh, it's cycles is just way too expensive to render it, you know we want to use just EV okay so that's one let's make another one um, and you can just you know do the exact same technique as that uh, we'll just do another cylinder we're gonna lower it again to 16 
uh, screencast, make sure it's running so that you could see all the things I'm pressing. Okay, so this should be almost the same. Uh, we're just gonna uh, move this up a little bit, scale a little bit. So it's one of those kind of tall, um, kind of lanky. All right, so I'm gonna press I, scale that a bit. Okay, I'm gonna go to the front. Make sure you can see it see through. So when I press extrude down here, when I go all the way down, I could actually see where it's at. I can press S and then I'm scaling this so that the lines are kind of matching. All right, so that it's slender and uh, it, the thickness is the same. We could have done that multiple ways. We could have even used solidify on that one. We didn't have to do that. You can just apply solidify and then you can just change it to an object after. Okay, but the point here is after you've done that, you probably would want to add your subdivision surface and then of course it looks like it's going to fail again because there's just not enough geometry in here. Okay, so what we can do is add some control R and I'm just going to force this one close to the bottom, another control R close to the top. I'm going to do the same thing for the inside, control R close to the top, and then I'm gonna go wireframe here, control R, inside again. I'm just gonna force this one close to the bottom. Oh, I think, you gotta go solid here, and control R right here. Kind of force that close to the bottom, okay? Just so that it's kind of uniform. All right, so at the bottom here, still see this kind of jaggedy kind of stuff. I'm gonna press number three, press I. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna press E just so that it goes in a little bit, just so that it has that kind of pattern and then press I again, just so that we clean our model. All right, so over here uh, at the top, I probably wanna do Control R in the middle, and then I will do G, Z, kind of move that up just so that I get kind of like a curved top right here. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. I'm looking at it on the side, but if you want, uh, you can design your uh, Bezier on this one. So I'm gonna do a Bezier curve. Okay, let's move it over here. Um, RY, okay. RY90. Okay, and then we're gonna follow this uh, kind of design in here. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the normals. Select both. I will subdivide it. Let's say one more, here we go. So let's kind of make this one a little fancy. So we're gonna go like so. I'm gonna go here. I want that handle kind of curving. All right. Okay, we'll do the same thing here. kind of make those kind of handles almost kind of equal so that we can guarantee okay all right so is that too much probably we can always reshape it okay i'm probably going to leave this as a circle only so I'm gonna go have that, okay? And I would want this uh, uh, to kind of be outside. So there we go, it's like I wanted the effect that it was attached and it was intentional that it's a separate piece as opposed to the previous one where we actually uh, added it. Uh, uh, pretending that it's a separate object. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's part of the object. Okay, so on that one, I can do uh, change the radius to a little bit smaller. Same thing with this one. Okay, maybe. 
maybe move this one a little bit closer. Uh, maybe increase the radius on this one a little bit. Same thing with this. Just so that it, it has that different kind of look. Uh, probably move the entire thing closer to the cup. All right, and then right here, uh, where's our, uh, uh, oh, it won't peel the cap because we're not using the object. So we're gonna have to uh, change those after. Okay, so let's say that's good enough right there. Okay, I'm gonna right click it, convert to mesh. Then we have this hole right here. So what we're gonna do is uh, press number two to go to edge mode, select all the edges and then press F to fill it in, okay? This is one that's not gonna work too well once you um, subdivide, uh, subdivision surface. So press I right now, so you get that, okay? And then if I go to number three here, side viewport, I would just move that a little bit just so that it, it naturally has like a, some sort of tapering, okay? Sorry, that flipped over. Press the wrong button. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. Press I. I'm sorry, not I. Uh, F. So I'm alt clicking the entire thing. So it selects the entire ring. Press F, I. Okay, and then we can press GG. Uh, oh, well. Uh, it won't, it will follow the last command. I'm going to go to the side and then it's kind of moved like so. Apply a uh, subdivision surface to it. Shade smooth. Same thing with our cup to kind of match it. Let's say we're happy with this one. You know, you can do multiple ways to, uh, uh, to kind of color them. Okay, I'm going to go con control J to combine the two together. Right here, I can go with my material, make this one a little bit smoother. I can add another material to it. Let's say this one will make it red, okay? And then we can go and do some uh, subdivision to this. And then so I can pick um, parts that are red and some parts that are white. So I'm Alt Shift clicking. Okay, and I'm gonna assign just the red right there, which is, all right, let's take a look. All right, again, depending on the design that you want, okay? All right, so that's another one, okay? So what about for lamps and whatnot? So let's do the lamp. Depending on the design, of course, okay? So uh, let's first create a base for it. I'm just gonna go with a cylinder again. I'm gonna leave it at 32, okay? Uh, and I'm going to make this one um, a little bit shorter. I'm gonna turn on my tools here so you can really see what's happening. So screencast, make sure that's on. So we're gonna create the base and I'm going to shade smooth this one so we see the difference later okay right here i'm going to extrude um oh, i'm sorry press i okay then extrude press i then extrude scale press i press e again you have to be looking at a design. Uh, I'm just kind of making this up. You know, it would be better if you actually have a photo where you could actually see all this stuff right here. All right, so there it is. In order to see all this rigid um, or sharp corners, even after you smooth shade it, you want to go here under the data panel, normals, auto smooth. So auto smooth will make those a little bit more obvious, okay? So let's go here so you can see it on EV, okay? All right, so what we can do here is bevel, okay? Uh, first, we need to object, apply, transform. So Blender knows how to properly bevel this thing. So I'm gonna do number two, edge mode. Alt-click, select the whole thing. 
I'm also going to do a shift alt click so that I will want to bevel all this, all these lines and share the same kind of bevel uh, for uh, all of it. Okay, we're not going to see that one right there. So I'm going to do bevel right here. And then I'm going to push this up so I can see my bevel. You can see it is being applied equally on everything. And I do want some segments to this so that it's kind of fairly smooth. So I'm going to go with just four. There it is. Okay. We're seeing a little bit of a shadow artifact here. So that's just on the light. So if I select my light, I'm going to go to shadow with the light selected. Contact shadow. Okay. Turn on contact shadow and you can need to probably play with the distance and whatnot just so that you know that uh, you need to do this for all your light if you plan to uh, uh, render in Eevee. Okay, so it just gives you a like a contact shadow for it. Okay, you need to increase uh, bias and smoothness, do all this kind of thing with the light so that you can actually get it to look good. Okay, high bit depth while in Eevee could help too. You gotta, you know, crank up all this. There's there's a lot of kind of tiny little manipulation thing, but Eevee right now. Uh, it's not doing too well regarding um, how smooth this one gets, okay? Um, they're still kind of fixing it, all right? So let's uh, continue on this one, okay? So I'm on the front, so I'm gonna get a curve for it. Uh, let's do the uh, lamp itself. So that would be, uh, we can make something really simple. Um, we can do the kind of like how we model the apple, right? I don't know if you guys remember that one. In the front right here, so I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go with curve, um, I'm gonna go with pad. Okay, so pad is just a straight line. And then in order to do the apple, we always model on the left side right here. So I'm going to just simply rotate this R 90 degrees, so it's standing. Okay, probably gonna scale this one because it's massive. I'm gonna put it over here. Whatever we do on this one, it, that kind of creates kind of if you remember the apple and the pear and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to apply a, a modifier to this. I'm going to apply the screw modifier. Okay. And then we're going to tell it to uh, do, let's say, which one? Let's it. It's the X. Oh, okay. My mistake. Uh, let me click undo. Should not have moved that in there. Um, we're supposed to move it while in edit mode. Okay. So let's say uh, I move it away in edit mode. All right. And it keeps the center right here. So that when you actually apply the screw modifier, you could see it. There you go. Along the X. It just made this kind of fancy cylinder. Okay. So, but while we're editing here, so whatever I do with this, let's say I move that, do you see it? There's our lamp, kind of, well, part of the lamp, at least. Or the head for the light bulb. And go fancy like this, kind of like a bell. Or I'm gonna go with a more concave look, okay? And of course, we can uh, close that if you want to, or you know, you can manipulate it after. So I'm gonna go here and subdivide this. I want another extra one right there because I do wanna put some design kind of elements to it. Okay, so I want that kind of, you know, you kind of see that usually on kind of lamps where it has this weird kind of bulge right there, okay? So let's say we're pretty happy with that. Probably make this opening a little bit better. Okay, and then I'm going to do is uh, simply apply. Okay, and this becomes, um, uh, and then we can convert it to a mesh. This becomes a polygon, but it's too high density here. So I pro forgot to kind of lower the, uh, the steps on this one. So 
I went and undid all that before I applied it. So it's still alive in a way, okay? So I can um, turn on wireframe here so I could see it. So if I were to uh, change the steps, the uh, iterations right here, then I could probably lower that. Uh, but no, we'll, we'll leave it like this so that it's actually fairly smooth. It's the line, uh, the original line is what we need to change resolution right here. The actual line before I applied the, uh, the modifier, it's this one. Uh, let's see, it's on 12, okay. Let's see here, I'm gonna turn this back on, go back to the line, and then there we go. So I'm gonna lower the resolution to, let's say two, all right, that's actually not bad because once we applied um, other modifiers to it, okay. Uh, let's see, maybe three, okay. Then I can go back here, turn off my wireframe so that it doesn't confuse us later. I'm gonna click apply, right click, convert to mesh, okay. Doesn't look too solid, that's why we have to apply another one called solidify. We did this for the, uh, for the book. Okay, and I want even thickness and then give it thickness right here. So let's take a look. Okay, we want to give it thickness inside. All right, so that's the thickness of it. And then we're going to click apply here. And it's now this, okay. And we're going to go with uh, auto smooth on the normal so we get to see it. All right. So we're going to, uh, uh, you can put other design kind of elements to this. You can put a sphere in there to kind of cap it off. But anyway, let's uh, position this one. So let's say for your desk, it's kind of pointing this way. All right. So we'll do another one, Bezier um, curve. We're going to do a R90. So it's standing up. RZ90 so that it's this way again. It just makes it easier to visualize. That's why I'm doing all that. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the normals. Select both points right here and subdivide again. And let's say, we're gonna simplify this a bit, just two right there. And then I'm gonna position this. Let's kind of zoom in here. All right, put that in there like so. I'm gonna go with big movements on the handles here. And usually, because this type of plant, the, the neck right here is, you know, you, you adjust it. So I'm gonna bring that down like so. Let's take a look. I don't want it kinda. Okay. That will probably will do, right? Um, and then we can do um, uh, geometry, put a depth in there, there we go. Okay, for now, so let's take a look here. So what I want to do is uh, get this one, press N, lower its radius a bit so it just kind of fits to that uh, hole that we have in there. So GZ, I'm going to move it down. There we go. And you're kind of just eyeballing it. All right. It's probably good enough for now. Same thing here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go back to number one right here. Probably move this a little bit. Okay, so let's say that's the, uh, and it's up to you. You can put a ball in there if you want, if, uh, if it's going to be seen, okay? And let's say we wanted to make sure this kind of looks like it's one of those things that you can kind of bend, all right? So um, let's take a look what it looks like in wireframe mode. All right, looks like we got the segments and I'm not gonna mess with any of that stuff. So I will just simply uh, uh, right click this, convert it to a mesh. So it's now a polygon. However, I'm gonna do some 
things here, okay? Uh, if you uh, look at uh, what we do when we scale, it always scales in the middle, right? You see where that is, the point? There's another way to kind of do things. It's called, uh, that's median, by the way, your median point. Individual origins simply means scale along each individual selection, okay? So I'll show you what that means. I'm gonna go to uh, polygon mode here. Okay, I'm gonna alt click here, so it selects the entire row right here, right? If I click shift right now in alt, and I get every other selection, so alt shift click, and I'm clicking this line. If you click this one, you get something else, so you don't wanna do that. So you just wanna select this one. All right, so I'm gonna go through the line here. All right. Uh, I probably don't wanna do that because I wanna put stability in there, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna extrude this. And when you move your mouse, it's gonna to try to extrude, right? So you're gonna right, um, right click to cancel. That means there's still an extrusion there. Okay, it's still ext uh, extruded. I just right click to cancel the move. I'm gonna press G to show you. There it is. There's an extrusion, right? If I scale this to make those things smaller or bigger, here's what happened. They're all trying to center where? To the middle point. I'm gonna click undo. If I change this temporarily to individual origins, Watch when I scale. It's scaling within the individual origin. Does that make sense? Okay. And then when you're done with that, don't forget, switch it back to median point. Otherwise, you'll go crazy because each time you do a scale, it's always doing it in its individual origin. So it's kind of made it kind of like that. And then I'm going to do, a, let's say here, shade smooth. Auto smooth, but in auto smooth, it still has this kind of faceted kind of robotic look, right? So you got to play with the angle until you're pretty happy with the result. So that should be, that's not bad right there. Okay, so I'm going to go here. Okay, so let's give it that kind of very metallic look. Okay, I'm just going to go uh, combine the whole thing together, Control J. Give it a, a new material. I want this metallic right here. So it looks very metal. Oh, there's still a, a, there you go. So I gotta adjust it some more because I combine it and it inherited the other ones. Okay, and we'll make it metallic. Um, we can make it uh, kind of shiny if you want to. Totally up to you what you want to do with this at this point. Um, you can clear code it if you want. Uh, Give it like a shininess to it. Make it probably like gunmetal, gray, very fancy looking, okay? All right, so there's that. So all curb that you can use. You probably don't wanna use this kind of Terminator <laughs> robotic arm. Just wanna show you uh, what you can do with it uh, for your uh, very um, expensive looking rustic table. All right, so. Okay, I'm gonna end the uh, uh, share right here. I'm gonna stop the recording.